So here is a short introduction for all of us that want to produce electronic content for teaching in those uh, difficult days. So we have to, you know, immediately be able to to do that and to produce small snippets uh, of content for our students. And so how does it how does it work? Uh, if you have an iPad Pro like I have, um, then this is really, really very, very simple. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is that you, if you pull down on the top right of your iPad, then uh, this menu opens and you see this red circle, which I already pushed uh, to start this, uh, this video. Usually it would be white, so this one here, yes? And so uh, you, if you hold it a little bit longer, you can choose if you have audio as well. Uh, so you, of course you need to switch on the audio so that you have the video plus your voice. And then it usually gives you three seconds until the video starts. And this of course already happened. Once you're done, you would again push that button and the, and the video would, would stop. Okay, so what you can do now is you can directly speak at your, uh, at your audience. And for that, you have to figure out first, where is your camera? In my case now here, it's on the left side. So if I'm speaking to the left side, then I have direct contact with my audience. So the cool thing is here with the iPad that you have your video, but you can switch between programs. How do you do that? You go with your finger to the bottom line and just pull that up. And so all your applications enter your screen. And so I think one of the main aspect that many teachers would like to do is just uh, talk about their slides, yes? So here I actually have a program uh, which is called UPAD and I, I changed my slides to a PDF. And what I can do now is I can, I can choose my pen and uh, then I can do notes on my slide, yeah? So I can write stuff A, B, C, or I can do, I don't know, maybe some circles and talk while I'm doing this. And so doing that, you provide a little bit more entertainment for your students because of course they don't just want to look at your slides, but they want to see something, something going on. Yes. And uh, let me go back to the camera right now. And so saying that I would not do more than maybe two to five minutes. So choose maybe just one or two or three slides, depending how fast you are, uh, because otherwise it will get really boring for the students and also maybe talk a little bit to the camera uh, and show stuff on your slides. Then, uh, so we take a look at uh, something else. Uh, there are several programs out there where you can do your own notes and uh, develop stuff. So in my case, I use concepts a lot and on concepts, it's more or less an infinite white space. And now, you know, you can start drawing your explanations that maybe A leads to B or whatever you want to explain. Oops, that was too ugly writing. So take care that in that situation, you still do writing that people can also read. And here, you know, you have all the, all the opportunities of drawing stuff, of using different uh, different approaches simply by your own personal style and your and your handwriting. Okay, so this might be a good way, you know, to be to stay interactive and to note stuff um, as you go, and and that will of course uh, be more interesting for for the audience. Uh, what you can also do, because sometimes that takes quite a long time, you can actually do a movie. So what we're doing exactly now, you can do that and produce that. And then you do a second video in which you actually refer to the already existing video because then you have the option to fast forward. Let me show you what I mean. So here I explain uh, in a course of prototyping, I explain what a persona is and, and how we do that. And I explain three components. However, the video takes five minutes because I also write and visualize. And if I have pre-recorded that, I can fast forward down here, yeah? So I can take the students along in a higher speed or in the worst case, I can also come back to something before and explain that again. So here I have the whole flexibility of trying out stuff and maybe also pausing here. So I can just print pause and then I can go on and I have quite a lot of flexibility. And then at the end, 
So I explain this, 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 and here I have the overview. And so maybe I say some summarizing words um, and then again, get back to my uh, camera and, uh, and make some final words um, as a summary. So what you saw in this video is that you can use your camera and actually this is another important command. I would use the, the so-called photo booth app because if you just use the camera app, then it always zooms at your face and you always have a yellow, uh, you always have a yellow frame around your face. If you use photo booth, that's, that's not the case. Uh, so what did we have? We had slides that you can actively, um, actively design while you're filming. We had certain programs where you can um, take your notes. So I used concepts, but, but there is also like notability or other programs that you will definitely find. And then the, the, the last trick was that you can actually already film that and then do a second video on top of that that enables you to move back or forth um, and in, increase the speed of that. Okay, and so then finally I would, you know, again, press this button and finish my video. But let's not do this now because I have to explain one more thing. Usually the size of your video would be much too large. So uh, when you upload that or also if students use it, the size is a limitation because, you know, these days everybody is on, is on the net. So what I would do is I would go to iMovies with your completely recorded, um, your recorded file and size it down. Yes. And uh, so what you actually just have to do is you have to open iMovie. If it's an Apple uh, device, you can import this one file and then you can export it again with a lower quality. Uh, and I might do uh, a second video just to show you how easy that, uh, that functions, yes? But for now, these were a couple of options for digital teaching. I hope you can use them and I wish you best of luck and also entertainment for your students. I'll see you.